members of the public are present, so there's no acknowledgement there. Um, so no public comment. All right, so the minutes, the minutes from January 10th, um, which everybody has received, hopefully had a chance to look through. I think there's a, just a couple of uh, known correct. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> um, we're not going to vote. Uh, Sherry, you got that right, because I answered you that we're not going to vote on the bylaws tonight. We're going to hopefully take our final pass. Please, God, our final pass at them having to do with the Housing Authority seat. Um, yes. And then we'll vote next month if everything else is in place. So that's one thing. Is there any other? Oh, does anyone want to move to? I think Jim told me before the meeting started he was going to move to accept the minutes. I'd be happy to move acceptance of the minutes to get the discussion rolling. Okay. <laughs> so much Second. for that. Second. Second. Thank Christina. you. All right. So discussion. I think I jumped ahead. I shouldn't have done that. Was there anything else that anybody saw that needed revision or changes or correction? Okay, I just had a question about the um, uh, it's about the new staff member, maybe not a new staff member, but the new position. Where did it go? Director's report, staffing. So it's on the uh, 3B. So maybe I'm just not reading it right. This, the full-time activities position posting may have to be open to members of the clerical union. Actually, I think I did read that wrong. I, I thought it would, would only be posted to the members of the clerical union. Okay. So never mind. Okay. Okay. So the amended motion is with one correction. And and that correction is that we are going to discuss but not approve the bylaws. At that's this correct. Point. Yep, that's correct. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No, thank you. Okay. Good. Um, financial report. Before we do the financial report, I just want to say one thing, and that is that my my goal always is to try to keep this meeting to an hour or so. And I know last month we did run over. So sometimes I feel myself like I'm rushing and not being warm and cozy and friendly, but I, I, I know people have lives, people have things to do. And it's wonderful that you're giving up this hour or so to even be here, plus the time you spend prepping. So I'm just, most of you are probably glad, but I'm just going right now to the financial report. So Karen, take it away. That's why I move as fast as I do sometimes. I have nothing significant in the financial report. Um, we are on track with spending, not over on anything. I'm not, I'm not worried about this year's budget. We're right on track. Okay, excellent. Any questions about the monies that we saw for January? February, I'm sorry. No, January. 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 Okay, we do have to... Motion. I'll make a motion to accept the January financial reports. Thank you, Maureen. Second, I'll second it. Susan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, the program report. Anything that you want to say, Karen, about that? Or three point three and a half days? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so we have um we started doing some of our programming that is funded through the MCOA grants that we got for nutrition innovation and for um, dementia capacity building. So we have the we ordered the new dishwasher that's actually come in and is almost ready to go. And the room dividers for the dining room so we can do the caregiver support group um, caregiving during that are arriving sometime in the next week or two. So we should be set up for that. Um, our guest chef is going to be doing his first cooking class next week on the 21st, and that's been well received. We are maxing out at 10 people signing up for that. Um, so things are going really well with those. We're excited to start the care, the care for the caregiver support group. We are going to be using 
uh, most likely I'm waiting for them to give me their bid to make sure it's within the grants funding I have, but um, Home Instead will provide the care and that's gonna start in March. So that'll be twice a month. We're going to do, I think a slight change from when I talked to you last, instead of just doing it for two hours during the caregiver support group, we're gonna offer four hours of care so people can drop their loved one off, do the caregiver support group, and then maybe do an errand or two and come back and pick up their loved one. So we're excited to offer that. That will be from 9.30 to 1.30. So their their loved one will have lunch here with us. We're going to oh, order okay. Mystic Valley bag lunches. Excellent. Yeah. For them. So those are the big things with the grants. Um, the March newsletters are done. We're going to be getting them ready. to. We haven't gotten them yet, but if anybody subscribes online, you would have gotten it this week. Um, so you'll see some of those things. We are having the St. Patrick's Day party. So that's a save the date if anybody wants to come and help. That's going to be on March 15th, which is a Friday from 1130 to 1. And we are going to serve Brightview is sponsoring us again. They're going to provide us the two big trays of shepherd's pie that they did last year. And we'll get desserts. Um, our activities coordinator, Maureen, is um, has a fairly dynamic personality and is a bit of an entertainer. So she's actually going to be our entertainer for the event. <laughs> um, so she's going to do some jokes and lead people in songs and um that kind of stuff. The senior tax workout work off is officially closed off. Everybody completed their hours. We maxed out and had 20 seniors participate in the program, which is the max that we're allowed to have. So that was really exciting to be able to do that. And then we had really multiple departments who utilized the service. So that was really nice. It wasn't just us, the library and DPW. We actually had people who were in the office in DPW. The schools used a couple of people. And we had three people that helped out with the before and after school care. So I thought it was a really successful property tax work off year. Is um, that a fiscal, that, Karen, can I ask you, is that fiscal year or calendar year? Yeah, that's fiscal year. It seems okay. calendar year because it goes from July through February. So they okay. had to finish by beginning of February. And the people who finished in the second round, the amount comes off of their May taxes. If they finish by November, it comes off of the January taxes. So we're in pause for that. We'll accept applications for fiscal year 25 in mid-April through mid-June, and then I'll start matching people. So and do we people want to stay on, you know what I mean, just to kind of stay on, or is that like frowned upon? or Unless it's a, a, like a skilled position, like my two nurses who do the blood pressure clinics, we really try and rotate people out. There's mm -hmm. one in elections who stays on because it requires special training from the state. Otherwise, we do try and offer it to somebody else just so that everybody gets a fair chance of participating. Because yeah. for the 20 positions last year, we had 40 applicants. Oh, wow. Yeah. So positions like the cemetery that they help out um, in other areas, we do swap them out. But we have a couple of skilled positions like Karen Sweat this year came back and did crafts for us. So if we didn't have another person who could come in and do crafts in the way that she does, then we will let her stay on because it's a necessary service that she's filling. Mm hmm Aaron, can you just let us know what kind of capacity you need help on the 15th for? Like what time and duty? And really, it would just be the help serving. And it's a fairly easy one, so we don't need a ton of help because um, the shepherd's pie, we just scoop it right out. But it starts at, what, 11.30, so really 11, just to help greet people and, um, and serve. And I have... I'll let you know. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And no okay. pressure if people can't. We totally understand it's the work day, so we can. We oh, can so that's it. you're having the party on the Friday, the fifteenth. Friday the fifteenth, eleven thirty to one. Is that that's as well attended as the Christmas part, holiday party? I would imagine, or close to. It, it was last year, and last year it was supposed to be on a different day, and I forget what happened. If it was snow or something interfered with our original day and we ended up having it on the Friday and we were worried we wouldn't get a lot of people, but we had 75 people. Yeah. We're able because Brightview has donated the shepherd's pie to offer it for $5. So it's a really reasonable price to come in and have a meal. So hopefully it maxes out. It usually does. And we can put it at 75 just for space. Will there be music or some? Well, you said song, sing along. Maureen, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving it in her capable hands. She's going to have Irish music to sing along with, and I'm not sure what else she's going to do. Um, but she's a character, so I'm sure she'll keep everybody entertained. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I think those are the big things. We have a lot of um, educational stuff we've been working on setting up. So Blue Cross Blue Shield is coming back in March. We have a um, heart failure lecture going on this month. Um, we have, what was it? Mass Health has been coming in. That wasn't, we switched to appointments just so that they don't come if there's nobody wanting to come in to see them. Uh, but they've been able to help a few people with that. And there was something I wanted to share with you that has just poof left my brain. Um, oh, big one actually though is we are doing an MBTA communities when they came and presented to us a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. They're actually going to come in and do an information meeting for the seniors. We wanted to get the seniors the opportunity to ask any questions they have ahead of the town meeting that will be voted on. So if they want to go to town meeting to vote, like if they come in here and say, oh, this, I really want to vote on this, it may let them know the information and what the whole project's about. So the team, Erin Kakinda and a couple of other members from her group are going to come and present to the seniors on March 20th. We're giving them free lunch to come in and hear what they have to say because we think it's an important important voting item for May that we want to make sure they have the opportunity to ask questions in a smaller forum or a lot of the public forums are at night. So it gives them a better yeah. chance during the day to come in and ask. What day of the week? March 20th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th. Is that a Wednesday? Yeah, that's a Wednesday. So that's 1130 to 1. So they'll do the formal presentation they gave us and then there will be question and answer time too. So we're does, the, does anybody lunch. present like an opposing view than the people that wrote the proposal? It's good that they're going to do it the same way they're doing the public forums. So they'll present mm -hmm. it and then people can, the same way we did, people can push back and ask anything that they want against it. If they're just going to say, this is what we're voting on. Here's the, so I, I, we're holding it in the same way the public forum, the public hearings are. So there's not really an opposing view person, but they can speak up and oppose as much as they like. There certainly, there certainly were opposing views in the in the item. Uh, I don't know if we could, you know, go back and sort of find where that was and make that available or highlight those. But you know, they're publicly available. I think we're trying to keep it like a, a information. You know, I think we're trying to keep it in the same format that the public hearing is in. We have some pretty vocal people who I have no doubt will have no problem speaking up. Um, um, to ask those hard questions, similar to the hard questions that we asked within our own board. Well, I think, I mean, they will present the what a no vote means, what a yes vote means, I would assume. What yeah, I'll make sure that they do. Yeah, when we, would, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead, Susan. Yeah, well, what would, what would a no vote mean for the town? Um, and I'm not asking right. to answer that, but they need to answer that. Um, they do. And when I booked them, I said, this isn't like a sales pitch. This needs to be yeah. like, like, here's the facts. Here's what you're voting on so they can be informed voters. It wasn't, it, I said, you know, you can't, you can't come in if it's going to be just to try and sell them on it. It has to be just to right. give them all the facts of what it all means. So that is the plan. If they don't do that, I'll ask the question um, on behalf of the group. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they are supposed to um, answer that. Oh, I know the other thing I wanted to tell you guys is we have, we're very excited. We are going to be starting in April, a once a month bereavement support group. This has been something we've been trying to get worked out for a while and finding the provider was hard, but Leahy Health is going to provide that service for us. It will be for six months. And then depending on the success of it, we may continue after the six months, but it's going to start in April. I believe we're going to do the fourth Tuesday of the month. So April 23rd will be our first bereavement support group. And so, who somebody from Leahy will what a social worker or a therapist or what do you, do you know who's going to run it? Not yet. This is hot off the presses. Today is when we confirm okay. the start date. Yeah, that's great news. I mean, yesterday you told me maybe I happened to be in the center, and you told me maybe, or you expected mm -hmm. to hear. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah, so I'm waiting. I'll get information soon, and then I can share it with the group at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of looking as Tuesday is a good support day that we're going to have the caregiver support twice a month and then the bereavement support group once a month. So it's a nice quiet time to be able to help people in the classroom, which is why we've chosen that day. There's not Zumba or one of the louder classes going on next door. Okay. And I guess the last thing people probably saw it in the item is that the last town council meeting, there was a discussion on utilizing a new space within the town. And part of that space is our, um, 
conflicting info on the floors, but ten, we all refer to it as the second and third floor. The paper referred to it, I think, as the third and fourth floor. Um, and they did, um, Mr. Mayo did reach out to see what our needs would be and what, if there's anything we needed. So we did submit that we would still like to keep one of our rooms that we store um, our medical equipment in and that we could benefit from extra function space, it, it, extra programming space during the open hours if that was available. Ideally for us, that would be if they finish everything, the, the third floor that has the stage would be fantastic programming space for us. Mm. But it'll be like a mixed use, right? It wouldn't just be us, but it'll be nice to have that for programming because that's the one thing that hold us back right now is we don't always have the space to offer as many things as we'd like. Is it usable space now? Where would it have to be rehabbed or refurbished in any way? I mean, it needs work. Clean. It needs work, okay. Mm -hmm. So it would have to be. Um, and so what's up there? Is it full of stuff besides the other, other um, store stuff up there? No, we have our equipment. DPW has some stuff stored up there. So there's just some general storage stuff that's on there. Um, but yeah, so they're looking at our space. They're looking at the herd school. They're looking at the plot of land on Baker Street, I think. And then the last place is uh, Five Common. So where the health department currently resides. Those were the four areas that were talked about at the town council meeting. Did they talk about like if that space, would they put any office stuff up there and affect parking in any way for the at senior activities? Senior I don't think they have any set decisions made yet. I did put in my response, I also put that if they were to move an office space up to the second floor that we would want, yeah. that ideally we would need to have a policy in place for parking because yeah. we already have yeah. a parking problem here. So right, right. we need staff to park on the street or we need to look at that because really when we have exercise turnover days, you know, when classes where you have back to back popular exercise classes or on bingo days or a large portion of the week, we are out of parking and people are parked on the street. Yeah. So that's something they want to look at. Sometimes pretty far down the street, not even just right in front of us, but a few houses down on Converse. So I did address that concern or I, I submitted that concern when I submitted my, my thoughts on it. Yeah, good. Is there active interest of uh, some other entity that you know of who is looking for a space that's in your building? I think that's all still in the works. To be determined? Mm -hmm. Was there any discussion of rental space? You know, Not according to the town. I think it was just a very quick presentation to the town councilors from Mr. Mayo. So I don't, I don't think I get into that level of detail. The article and the item is a good recap of it that... Um, Jonathan Chine wants to have some public forums, I believe, to get input on different ideas for the use of the space. There's some discussion about housing, um, things like that. I don't know any inside intel. I'm just reading from the paper. Okay, yeah, I didn't read the article. So. Well, I think it's good thinking. I mean, there is a lot of space that could be better utilized, I'm sure. And um, I know that like the Stoneham Senior Center, they maybe don't currently, but they were renting out space to uh, a nonprofit agency, I can't remember the name of it, um, in town, so that they were getting some revenue, um, you know, a couple offices on the upper floor, mm -hmm. so something, something, like, anyway, okay, any, any uh, quest, other questions for Karen, or Karen, do you have any other um, thoughts about how if someone here had time and or interest, could be, we could be helpful, I know Julie asked about the lunch, you know, the uh, St. Patrick's Day lunch, but is there any other need that you can see coming down the pike where we might be called to action? Um, no, I mean, if, if people are free and they want to come to the MBTA communities um, presentation, it might be a good support of the seniors to see some of the board there who look out for them, but definitely not. Um, it's Again, they're all during the workday, so I get that yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard. Um, no, not that I can think of. I mean, we're we're in pretty good shape with, um, we're, we're excited for the position to convert to full-time to have a little bit more help around here, but we're in pretty good shape. The congregate meal started back up on Mondays and in the middle of March 21st, we're actually going to start up on Thursdays too. We're going to push bingo back by 15 minutes, uh, which I don't think has been officially announced to the bingo players yet. If any are watching, um, we're going to let them know this Thursday. Shouldn't shift it very much. We're going to 
to shift things around a little bit. They should still get out at the same time. We're just going to start calling bingo 15 minutes later to give time for people to sit and have a nice lunch. We're hoping people will come in and eat the congregate meal and then go to bingo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, make a day of it. You're a good chunk of day. Okay. Karen, can I ask a question about the caregiver support group? So since it's a dementia support group, um, often people with dementia might have an altered diet. Will that be a restriction if somebody needs thicket or you know what I mean? Something like that or no, we should be able to we should be able okay. to either make the request if we need to, or if the family member wants to bring something special in for them to eat, oh, then we good. can also accommodate that. So oh, we'll awesome. definitely work around those needs. They have Great. to just, the, the primary thing is they have to be high functioning enough that they can toilet themselves because we're not going to provide nursing care. They'll be led in activities in, to that level. Could they be yes. accompanied to the restroom? Yeah, they could be accompanied to the restroom, but they would have to. They'd have to be able to use the toilet themselves and take care of their needs. Okay. Or yeah. Somebody. And what will be nice, we'll have. We're working all those kind of details out now about how many people are going to come to know how many caregivers we would need. Um, we could have a staff member be a backup caregiver as well if we need to. And mm -hmm. the first two sessions, um, Kathy Learned from Mystic Valley is going to come to help teach the caregiver some different activities they could lead the people in. Well, I, hope it's, I hope it's utilized. It's a nice opportunity for people. I agree. It sounds like a great, a great um, activity to offer. Yeah. yeah, that's my fear. I hope that we have people that I, I think it would be popular. People, once they learn about it and embrace it, I think it might just take a little bit of time to get up and running. So I'll and, have to do this. And they could get a ride. They, they, they could get a ride if they needed a ride. That could be arranged. Um, that's a question. <laughs> you know, if they could. Yeah, have... they can if they need to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Tuesdays are a good day. Tuesdays are a good day because we have two drivers on on Tuesdays. Um, we do market basket in the afternoons, but that wouldn't interfere with caregiver support group because that's in the mornings. That's great. That's a great initiative. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, next item is the bylaws discussion. And I, I'm not sure, I don't know, and Maureen and Karen, if you have any updates for us either on language and or Tom Mullen and or you know your board maureen is there any what do we need to know before we can put down wording to change the bylaws to reflect one position is reserved for the director um my board didn't have a problem with it we didn't okay. feel like we needed to vote on it because it's not our board okay. not our bylaws but we had a nice discussion about it and and um you know folks agree with what we think that it's an important um, relationship that we have with the Council on Aging and um, nobody was opposed or, you know, had any negative feedback. And they support your time continuing to however. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if um, Karen talked to Tom or Mullen or Steve. Steve had already totally blessed it. So I hadn't okay. talked to Tom because I thought <laughs> if we were going to show him the bylaws, we just show him the finished product and then he okay. can yeah. 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 I thought okay. the wording sounded fine to me. Um, similar yeah. to when I was on the disability commission in Melrose that it just with certain positions said, you know, one position is reserved for this. So I, I thought it sounded fine how it was. And the bylaw, like Sherry, I mean, you've done a lot of work on these, Sherry, but the one, um, the wording right now is I believe just reads or reads that somebody from the council on, I mean, the Wakefield Housing Authority. Is that correct? Isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah I thought one of whom is a representative of the Housing Authority. Yeah, and, and is that sufficient or do we want to designate the director? Um, well, if you say it's one position reserved, it means you're giving one position as a voting representative to this body right from that body so i think just saying that is I, I tried to keep it as simple as possible so people wouldn't get confused <laughs> not too much legalese could, right. could, you, could you just explain why why the requirement is necessary and we we have a representative now from the housing authority I, i'm assuming is that 
you, Maureen? Yeah, that well, yeah, but I'm I'm I was appointed by the town council to be on this board, not to represent the housing authority. So we kind of thought that that would be a good way I could participate in this board without you know having to be reappointed and making it a permanent um, affiliation between the council on aging and the housing authority. Um, I kind of like the the broad language that it currently is, rather than designating it as a director. I I just yeah. You never know who the director is going to be and is that person going to be someone who wants to sit on this board as well it kind of allows the flexibility for someone who has interest in, in wanting to join us and has that overlap but that's just my opinion on it yeah that's a good point no they're both good points did yeah. we feel that so my question is is it okay if it like is a board member you know, because you say representing the housing authority, so it could be a staff person or a board member. Does anybody have any thoughts on on that? Well, I have thoughts on that, only that who would get to make that decision, you know, and I guess that's probably a little bit of my back of my head fear, not a fear exactly, but, um, you know, we want that you're you're certainly committed and i know your board is committed too but who makes it who would make the decision from the housing authority as to who would be the representative right exactly so that would be right that would probably take us down a whole nother road to see yeah, if the housing authority board had to vote to appoint somebody um i don't i really don't know I think representative, though, like is is I feel like it's too broad because that could mean a board member, it could mean a staff person, it yeah, could, it could mean a tenant. It you know what I mean? It could mean anybody. Yeah, but isn't that all right? You know that it could. That's be all right with me. I mean, I'm I'm just throwing it out there. But then the the question is, who decides? Who fills that position? Those are the board. I mean, Was that a, Jim? Well, who I don't know who the housing authority is. Is it a, a decision making body? Is it a? It is. Uh, it's a board. We have a board of commissioners at the housing authority. Uh, three people are elected by the town, one appointed by the town council, and one appointed by the uh, governor's office. So we have a five person board. So as an hires agent, the director. Uh, so then, then uh, there can can that group then just appoint who's going to be the representative to this council. I don't I don't know. I think that's a question for Tom Mullen. I think that that kind of takes us in a different angle than we were talking about last month. So I think I, there's I, some, I think there's value added to the position being if it even if it wasn't the executive director, somebody who works for housing though, I wouldn't think I think there's where the value is is an actual employee of housing more so than a board member or a tenant. I mean a yeah. tenant would be free to apply on his or her own to be a board member. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Board member. Like everybody else in town. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> but an official representative because the need, you know, because of the senior housing, because of the housing issue and housing issues in town. I mean, that's the, and Maureen's term is ending. You're not even eligible for reappointment, Maureen, I believe. Right. I no, so I'm not. You're not. So that, that would mean, so that was part of the discussion, Jim, about why, why we want to kind of loop this representation in if we can, because so much goes on. Yeah. Under the, yeah. I think it's uh, a good idea. I, I assume there was somebody who would make that decision, you know, that there's a, housing authority decision-making body and they would say you know would you madam be representative to the council on aging that would probably have to be in the housing authority bylaws possibly no i don't know i don't know how far like it would like take mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. if yeah. you're going to put that on the housing authority to make that decision which i'm fine with but it it would involve does it have to be an absolute or can it can the bylaw say something like as available a staff representative though a staff does anybody have any yeah i mean i think i'd take as... more guidance on how you'd board it and obviously to karen's point like somebody somebody who is part of the housing non-board member 
as available. And if it's not available for whatever reason, or somebody just doesn't ever let Maureen, Maureen leave this group, I mean, then we're okay, right? Mm -hmm. So I like that. I like that. Uh, I like that idea of putting some kind of word in there, like um, unavailable or I don't know, available and willing staff member of the housing authority, something like along those lines. I like that, Christina. I think representative is too wide, though. That's going to yeah. get us in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I will. Okay. I will make some changes and indicate that um, instead of a position reserved for an available and willing staff member of the housing authority. I think that might be nice. Yeah. And a staff, is a staff member the right term to use? I would say so. If you don't want to narrow it down to the executive director, I mean, usually we have an executive director, we have a housing manager, um, you know, we have a director of lease housing, which is our section eight person. So we do have some staff people that would definitely be beneficial to the council on aging, obviously, because we. Yeah, it seems fine if that's, if that's available, if there are staff people who could be designated to be the representative. And, and the good thing about it being a staff person is it would be, it would provide continuity. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, elected positions change and. This way we have somebody who has institutional knowledge, you know, will provide continuity, just like Karen provides it for us. Good point. All right, so does that, Julie, to your concern before, uh, or what you raised about a representative, is that, are you okay with a staff, a designated staff member? Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, I, I think Maureen brought up a good point about representative being too broad, but I thought speci specifying director was too specific. So I think we landed on a good yeah. spot. Yeah. Um, so if we're okay with that, I'm, I just have one question about the, um, the, the new language in red about missing five consecutive posted meetings. Are we gonna take the sentence out before I, the thing that was interesting to me is that we had something in there, the sentence before, that mm -hmm. was different than what is in the town handbook. Mm -hmm. okay. right. And in the town handbook, it's, it talks about vacating if you miss five consecutive meetings. Mm -hmm. the, the three meeting option seems a little bit more, I don't know, loosey-goosey. It seems like it's more a matter of mutual determination between um, our chairperson and the person who's been missing meetings it gives you know that, that that person has the out of resigning but everyone has that out anyway if they have issues with continuing to serve uh, but the town wording in the town handbook is five consecutive and i had this happen for human rights we had somebody that missed she missed all but one half a meeting through a period of about eight, nine months. And it it took a long time before um, we could vacate her seat. And she had no choice in the matter because she had vacated. But it's it's it seems like a, it was a very difficult thing because it ended up I had a position that was basically empty mm -hmm. with no one serving in it, but I could not replace the person. Yeah, last month when Bob was here, he recommended going off what the town um, yeah. requirement would. And so that's what the town recommends is yeah, five. So the red, what's in the red is from the town. From the town. Yes, it's okay. from the town. So we would be striking the first sentence and just having that one sentence. Is that well, what? They don't say the same thing. They, right. they have different okay. situations. That's I why think. I didn't strike it because. The town's on aging mirror. Because there's different, it, it handles different situations. Oh, so you're Christina. Are you trying? Christina has something to add. I, I see your hand. <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like they sound too similar to like. Yeah. Well. Well, I think what the, the way I read this right now is that all right, if somebody missed three consecutive, that somebody, the chair or somebody, would ask her or him for their resignation they could refuse right they could mm -hmm. refuse. 
if they have another absence in that calendar year, um, then they could be they could be asked again. But if they miss five in a row, they're considered to have resigned automatically out. Yeah. So I, that's it's 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 a, it's it takes a while to chew that to mm -hmm. you know chew that trail. Um, that, that's a fair summation. You know, three meetings and it becomes a discussion. You know, then it individual. becomes an issue. But five missed. It's not it. It's there's no discussion. Which is what the town bylaws say. That's right. So we want to eliminate that three so meeting. This point. says that the town council would ask for the resignation, not the council on aging. Actually, what happened was Sherry Dalton vacated the person. She took her off. Well, that but the way this reads is that the town council would be. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she so we would escalate it to the town council. Yeah. All all we do is inform them that this individual has missed five meetings in a row and then they take action. And I just told Sherry, I said, she's missed five meetings in a row. She says, OK, we'll take care of it. And she was that was it. She was notified and that was it. I didn't have to say do a thing. Well, so I would hope I that part, that. But Go ahead, Karen. I'm, sorry. I'm confused with the three consecutive, though. Who's talking to them with three consecutive? Because that's not the town council, right? That would be the chairperson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. think it's confusing. That's internal. So I think that we need to separate it more because the council on aging may recommend to the town council that absentees be asked for resignation after three, but that's not really it. It would be the chairperson can, we, we, need, we need to move the council on aging down before the members, right? And then put the chairperson. But do we, if there's no meat to it, if the person doesn't have to resign, do we need that in the bylaws that the chairperson would ask them to resign after three? Because if they say no thanks, I don't want to, then. Well, that's true. That, that's true. If we're really talking, I mean, we're talking about a, a procedure rather than a bylaw. Bylaws do outline procedures sometimes, but. Is this, somebody... is this any, anything where the person could have a discussion with the chairperson of this committee and yeah. say what's going on? And, uh, you know, you're, you've stepped over the line here, but do you really want to be part of this organization? And, you know, is that realistic? You know, so that it's not quite so definitive. Or do we not have it in there and it's just a discretionary power, for lack of a better word, that yeah. the chair has? And to be able to approach someone and say, I've noticed you've not been able to attend our meetings. Um, would you prefer at this point to not be on the council? You know, instead of, do we have to codify it? Yeah. Can it just be something that's left to the judgment of the chair to talk to the person? I mean, it's in there right now, it's codified. Do we have to codify it? I'm wondering why it would, because I don't have anything like that in my other bylaws. Yeah, I, I like not codifying it. And I would hope, I mean, me right now, you know, I, I, I would have a discussion. I'd be happy to have a discussion with somebody. And, you know, I have had discussion with a member who, yeah. And so I think it's not a bad thing to take it out. Okay. Just not, not that every, you know, I'm not going to be chair forever, but, you know, I think we're, we're the, in terms of the kind of board that I hope and that Karen hopes we would be, you know, we, we look at people first and then rules and put, try to keep them together. But sometimes, you know, you got to do things that that are respectful. And I mean, somebody could, you know, somebody could be sick, somebody could have family care issues, somebody could have all kinds of reasons for not showing up. Um, and maybe they didn't communicate it, maybe they did, but I, I like the idea of taking it out personally and leaving the five consecutive. I know I had one member who missed several meetings, but what happened was she's a college, an adult college student and they changed her class schedule and it turned out to be on the night of our meetings. But she went back and read all the minutes and she was still participating and contributing. And so I didn't consider her vacating. You know, I, we talked about it and I, she was too valuable a contributor even though she couldn't get to those particular meetings. And she always weighed in. She read the minutes, she read the reports, 
Mm-hmm. She would give me, you know, information to report back to other people. So, you know. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I will leave, I will delete the line about the three absent rule, and I will include the the law the the bylaw as it is worded in the town handbook. Actually, I I cleaned it up a little bit and made it not so clunky. That was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just made it a, a I took out a couple of little here here for and therefore type phrases. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? Julie, yep. okay with that? Jim, this one. This one sounds like it then ends up being very directive. You know, if there's a five meeting absence, uh, that's it and you're out, as opposed to what we were just talking about in terms of we have a discussion with the yeah. chairperson uh-huh. and see if it's appropriate. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I'm more in favor of the discussion to see if it's appropriate for them to stay on, but. I'm not here. I'm. I guess I'm a little slightly confused about what what the consensus is at this point. Well, I th- I think we're saying that if they do miss five consecutive meetings, um, that there's there's, it's not fair to us as a board to have a non-active participant like that. Mm-hmm. It's not fair. Yeah. If someone misses five consecutive meetings, there would have been, I would hope anyway, that there would have been at least one discussion, if not more, prior to that between the chair or another representative and that member, maybe Karen, you know, to find out what what her or his issues are. And the person may or may not resign. The person may or may not take a leave. The person may or may not be like the, the board member that Sherry just described. You know, they still participate. They Anybody can go back and watch our meetings. Um, you know, they might. So I think there would be a dependent, an, an individualization of absences prior to five meetings. Mm-hmm. But five meetings with no... Um, you know, with no participation, I think it's fair to consider that they willingly would willingly abandon their position. Willingly abandoned. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and the person I had was also unresponsive. Yeah. She didn't even return phone calls or text or email or I, t- totally unresponsive. Yeah. I'm, well, I got one message from her over the course of all those months apologizing that there was some family issue. But other than that, I never heard from her. Yeah. So, so that was a very, ex- that was an extreme case. And I think that's the thing with this rule. It's for extreme cases. Other than that, it's really up to this body to determine if somebody is committed to, to working with us or not. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. Christina, you're nodding. Is that acceptable to you also? Sounds good. Okay, so Sherry, you have enough to rewrite for us? Yep. Appreciate yep. All, your, all your editing and fixing and going on. Um, thank you. I have, a, I have a language question that I wanted to bring out. I don't know if this is the right time or we're, there's a, another point of this that we're discussing. Language of bylaws or language of what? Bylaws? Language, language of bylaws. Yeah, yeah, this is the right time, Jim. So I wonder about the, uh, I I would like not to use the word elder. Uh, I find that elder is, you know, sort of connotes sort of a uh, older and diminished capacity sort of Mm -hmm. uh, individual. Uh, I kind of like the word senior that we use sometimes, uh, or even defining who we're talking about in terms of the age. I know the, uh, under the purpose and the first one, it says the, identify the total needs of the community's elder population. And then it defines that those who are 60 years of age and older. Um, but I don't know, I mean, it's it, it's my personal reaction to the elder uh, definition that's attributed to someone. Um, I'm with you, I'm with you. I, I'd like to you know, consider, you know, can we, is there another word? And I think, you know, senior or, or describing a little bit about who we're talking about. Uh, rather than rather than elder, so that's one point. You could, I we could to always out. say town the residents to identify the total needs of the community's population sixty and older. 
yeah, or residents who are 60 years of age and older. Yeah, something like that. I mean, Instead of it's, it's consistently through every word that uh, elder is used in the bylaws, but uh, is that the only word, place? A little word. No, it's it's oh, it says like, elder uh, affairs everywhere. Well, that's a EOA. You can't yeah. that's an agency. Yeah. Who are designated to assist elderly programs in the community? I see it one more time too. Resident sixty or older in our community or in the community. It wants on that first page D. Yeah, it is there again. Yeah. So I just googled the difference between elder and senior. Can I just read it to you? Mm -hmm. Um, at a basic level, the words elderly and senior are used to describe two different situations. While senior is used to describe an age group. Elderly refers to a matter of capability. Mm. Seniority well, denotes the actual age of a person rather than their level of physical and mental capacity. Ooh, we're seeing this in the news too, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought the, the the feeling was that you know, elder again may, suggested more than just the age mm. you know, of the person. I think that's a good catch because with the exception of the fact that EOEA is still EOEA, we've really gone away from using the term elderly. I mean, we're all mm -hmm. councils on aging or senior centers and actually even seniors somewhat gone away and they're calling like older adults are the two main ones being used right now are seniors and older yeah. adults, but seniors I think mm -hmm. still probably more widely used. So yeah, I think that's a really good catch. Yeah, nice yeah. job, Jeff. So would you like me to... Um, well, in that one case where they define, I will say town residents who are 60 years of age or older, and in other places where the word elder appears, change that to senior? Is that Unless referring question? to that elder affairs office. Except, yeah. except when it comes to the elder affairs, because that's an official title. Okay. Yeah. You saw the book, right? You've got a good sense for that. Okay. Yeah, and I think as much as possible, if you could, residents over age 60 and older, you know, or are that instead of the word senior, because I, I, you know, senior has certain. It could be that kind of thing. Of, yeah. that, uh, I was thinking if it was too confusing, you know, if, well, you know, do you add one more little item in here at the beginning and say the population that we're working with are those individuals who are, you know, so you throw in the word individuals as opposed to senior or elders or whatever it might be. And, um, you know, and so there's an initial context. Well, the town, I, the, I think the term town residence is important because that's who we serve. Although people from other communities, just like I go to senior centers, I was in Linfield today and Friday I'll be in Stoneham for different programs as well. But we're primarily here for programs for the town, the residents of the town of Wakefield. Age 60 mm -hmm. and older. Age yeah. 60 and older. I, 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 will, I, will, I will freshen that up, Jim. I think that was a great suggestion. Yeah, the good, the good. Yeah, because I don't feel like to an come elder. to a, a housing authority meeting because we have elderly housing, and that it, term is everywhere. You know, oh, it's all God. in the regulation. It's on the applications. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. I'm like, oh my lord. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I don't. You know, I am definitely. You know, <laughs> in that age group, beyond that age group, but I don't feel like an elder. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, there's a lot of anti-aging and using language like seniors and elders are, is really becoming um, a major, it's on a major stage. It's on a national stage at this point. Yes. yes. And I think that definition, Christina, was spot on capability versus age group. Yeah. 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 That was a good catch, Jim. I had one yeah. other one other word thing, if I could. Yeah, sure. Uh, the uh, the use of the what sounded like um, where are the directors? Is what I was looking at. Here. Um, the director is referring to or officers, excuse me, uh, chairman, vice chairman. Uh, the masculine form of that. Do we do we need that person? Is it do we use chairperson? Do we use just chair? Chair, chair and vice chair, yeah. Something like that. But if you know it's a 
just a, a point of reference, you know, if we can, you know, substitute something else that that um, doesn't have the masculine connotation. Oh, thank you, Jim. Yeah, perfect. I agree. I mean, I like that. Chair, vice chair. It's in there a few times. Yep. Our town council did it. We should certainly do it. There's another, and this is, this is maybe a bit even more controversial than that. As I was looking at it, I kept on thinking, I kept on looking for he and him mm -hmm. or her and she instead of they and them and there. And do you want me to do some work on that? Are there are those pronouns used in here at all? I don't see any, but I, I didn't, you know, when I was doing it before, but I if I would take another look and make sure that it is as neutralized as possible in terms of gender. Well, I think, I mean, please take another look, but I think my personal feeling is that they and them is a different thing than she slash he, you know, or he slash her. I know. Um, or him slash, you know, I think always that if there is pronoun that to identify two genders is appropriate. I'm not sure. Oh, well, I'm not and sure. Then, um, yeah, it refers to more than one person. You yeah. sometimes. Or well, yeah, but some people, you know, individual pronouns, that's a. I'm Maybe. fairly certain there's no pronouns in here, so I don't yeah. think I need to touch Looking that. Looking through it, I didn't see any either, so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. That takes care of that concern. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jim. These are both excellent. Language is important. Words are important. Can mm -hmm. I do one other little brief thing? Mm -hmm. The uh, under Under staff, Article five staff. Um, yep, page three, Article five. Yep. Um, yeah, that, I don't think this is true, actually. <laughs> employees of the council, you know, do we have employees of the council? Uh, no. Shall be supervised in daily operation by the director of the council on aging. Is the is Karen? Are you the director of the council on aging? Or are you the director of the senior center or something else it's the same thing so i'm the director of the council on aging yeah i was a little confused by that one too um because mm. i don't know if they're talking if they're talking about the board or what they're talking about as far as like the council should have the power to hire and dismiss employees of the council upon recommendation of the director so i'm i don't know who it's referring to in the council in the council <laughs> are they talking mm -hmm. about the director could remove an employee under that that works for me so i'm not sure what that has to do with the boards right. and do you, you don't need i don't think you need the permission or the approval of this body which is called the council on aging and we're I'm not involved in any hiring yeah. part of your duties as a uh, as a town employee i wonder if the council ever had an employee and that was why this was put in here or uh, maybe they they paid someone to be the secretary or i i'm just kind of throwing that out there that might but i don't know i think you're right jim this i don't think that this is applicable to anything that's going on today might be one of those things just to clear clear up the relationship between senior center and the council on aging so we don't need it at all really it sounds like we could strike this whole article five yeah, I think so because I mean, we're the count. This this body here is the Council on Aging Board. The Council right. on Aging is the town. You know, is who I work for, and the or town you, hires everybody, right, Karen? Yeah, right. So that would be this board wouldn't have hiring authority or firing right. authority over any of the people that work for me here in the senior center. Um, so yeah, I, you're you're right. I think it must have been an old thing that somebody was being paid. Mm -hmm. One of my staff members was being paid to be on the board and that if the board didn't think that person was performing to the level that they were on the council on aging board that they could, it's like, it's missing the word board in there on one of the councils. Mm -hmm. So I agree. I don't think it's applicable. And I'm glad you brought it up, Jim, because when I read them, I had a question on that. And then I just, poof, if I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 
I think it's great that we're modernizing this to this extent. It's been obviously many years. Okay. We might as well just really go for it then. Yeah. And, and the thing about bylaws is you try not to change bylaws more than every five or 10 years, any more often than not. I mean, so you want to do a thorough job. You want to do a careful job. Susan, your face smiling at us is <laughs> gives such I know, a I'm so sorry, my, my camera. I just I'm embarrassed actually is when I am, but I have no camera tonight for some reason. That's okay. The smiling face is really pleasant to see. <laughs> well, I'm smiling. Am smiling. I'm like so happy that we're doing this. And I'm so happy that with your new draft that's going to come out in a couple of weeks, Sherry, that we're going to be able to put it in front of everybody and we're going to take a vote in March. And hopefully after the vote, we're going to put it to bed as a, as a, not put it to bed as a document, but put it to bed as an issue and it won't be on our agenda again for two more years or something. Um, and thank you, Jim. Those are, I mean, all, all the great years. contributions you do. Yeah. Thank you for being so, so thorough, everyone in, mm -hmm. you know, that's had something to do with revising these. So. And thoughtful, even yeah. more than thorough, yeah. thoughtful. So okay. what, I could, what I could do is after Sherry sends us the revisions, I can then send that. I feel more comfortable now sending it to Tom Mullen so that we're not okay. asking multiple mm -hmm. times. And then I can report to you if he approves it as written or he thinks we need to make any changes so we can talk about it and vote at the next meeting. I hope not, but if we do, mm -hmm. um, that it, it does require that we, our own bylaws require that these this revision be sent to our members seven days in advance prior to a meeting. So we're looking at a three, you know, Sherry, is that doable? Do you think you can Oh, get yeah. That? Okay. Yeah, definitely. More important than the minutes. I mean, the minutes are important, but, you know, maybe this first even so we can get it into circulation. I'll yeah. have it all done by next week, everything. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um. Thank you, everyone. All right, so I'm going to take the liberty of uh, revising the agenda just a little bit in the interest of time. Um, the, um, as you know, many people have had good input in drafting on the um, orientation, and I'm going to send you, so particularly Sherry and Christina, um, I'm also going to send you within the next week a draft of a new, an updated orientation manual. Um, for our new board members when we bring new board members on in April or May, whenever that's going to happen. And for all of us, of course. But I want to send it to you um, soon and you will see it. And I'm going to ask that you spend, you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 10 minutes um, looking through it and just, make, you know, seeing what 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 you think. And we will come back to it next month. I don't think it's a voting item. Um, but it's certainly an item that it's a fluid document, but it's certainly an item that we want people to feel good and proud about that are on this board. So, um, so that'll happen. And then the second uh, modification to the agenda, I had asked Karen and uh, Maureen to talk a little bit to us about issues of housing in uh, Wakefield when people come to the senior center, to the housing authority because they're being evicted or because they're being, uh, they're homeless or they don't have anywhere, you know, they've, they're, whatever their situation is, they can no longer afford their home. Um, what what happens? What, what are their options? What are they told? And I thought it would be a good education piece for us as board members, since when people who are 60 and older fall into that situation, you know, we we know more than we know, or I know more than I know now anyway, about what happens. Um, so do people have another 15 minutes to stay on and listen, or would you want to postpone it till next month? I have to tell you, I know this is going to sound corny, but it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> and we, I have two dozen roses sitting on my dining room table Aww. and chocolates to eat with my husband. So I'm kind of like, I would like to end. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a motion to postpone the housing discussion until next month. <laughs> Sorry. but <laughs> uh, Yeah, I understand. I do. I, all right. So we have a motion on the floor. Does anyone want to second it? We'll second that. All right, a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Um, 
Okay. Well, I think we did some good work anyway. <laughs> and it is Valentine's Day. So anything matters not anticipating anything that anybody needs to bring up? I do have one quick thought. I am going to, if it's okay with the group, cut and paste that staffing article and send it to HR to make sure that I'm not missing something that they don't want us to take out of there. And mm -hmm. Sherry, if, if I hear back from HR and they say, no, you need to leave it in here. Here's why. I'll let you know before it gets taken out. Okay. Well, it needs to be clarified if it has to stay because it doesn't make sense the way it is. No, no, it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. And I'm sorry, but on that postponement motion, I missed two seconded. Uh, Jim did. Okay, thank you, Jim. And I don't know how you guys feel, but we've gone back and forth at our board meetings about the word table and postpone. And we decided that postpone is the better term to use because there's some people that think when you table something, you first have to vote to take it off the table mm -hmm. at the next meeting. And we don't want to we don't want to forget something like that. Okay. Like that's well, kind we're of we're very specifically postponing it till <laughs> I know. I, and I've done a lot of research on those two words and the difference between them and okay, okay. Okay. rabbit holes that we go down. Um, I will make a motion to adjourn if everybody is okay with that. Okay. Second. second that. Jim is second thing that. Thank you, everyone. Happy, you know, there's love in the world in all kinds of ways. <laughs> and you're being here is showing your love for your town and our, our people 60 and older. And those of us that are 60 and older for ourselves. So <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you all, all right, for my, right. my center.